My mom raised me with this mantra, get a good education, make good money, and don't depend on a man for anything. She wanted me to be positioned to where I had my own money and could take care of myself. If you're saying, but what about depending on the Lord? The Lord was not in the equation. I got pregnant with our first child, a boy. Not a thought in my head about staying home once he was born. But by the end of that trip, we were taking the step of faith. I was going to leave behind my six-figure salary. I've done a number of podcast interviews over the last year or so where people ask about my journey, how I got to this place or that. And then I'll get follow-up messages from people about my story. And I realized I haven't really talked a lot about my life as a wife or a mom on this channel. So I moved to do videos periodically where I'm not teaching, but just sharing. But definitely with the aim to hopefully encourage. And with this video, it's not about staying home versus working. It's not about that. I'm simply sharing my journey, how God led me. And actually the video is really about following the lead of the Holy Spirit despite our own goals and plans. So no matter what path you are on, I believe you'll be encouraged to take the walk of faith that's before you. But for the stay-at-home mom out there who may be feeling isolated, underappreciated, maybe second-guessing choices you've made to be at home, I've been there. My kids are now in their early 20s, which is incredible to me. And I understand the journey you are on. I pray something in my journey serves as an encouragement to you. So as the title says, I never wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. My mom raised me with this mantra, get a good education, make good money, and don't depend on a man for anything. My parents divorced when I was four and my mom had a great career with AT&T. So clearly because of the way things had turned out in her own life, she wanted me to be positioned to where I had my own money and could take care of myself. If you're saying, but what about depending on the Lord? The Lord was not in the equation. I was not raised to know the Lord, was not raised in church. For that part of my story, you can watch the testimony video I did, which I will link for you. So my mom gave me the plan and I followed it. Went to college, then to law school at George Washington. Got a great position when I graduated from law school, clerking for a federal judge in Wisconsin. Then got a position with a large Wisconsin law firm where I practiced as a litigating attorney. Side note, I was raised in the DC area, Prince George's County to be exact. So if you're wondering how I got from DC to Wisconsin, which I hated, testimony video. That's just a whole nother thing God did. But long story short, I started dating Bill Tate when I was in law school and he started his career at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. So we get married when I'm a young associate at the law firm. We build a house and the plan is that I will practice law in some form or fashion until I retire. But God, about a year after we got married, he shook up our lives. Bill and I both got saved, gave our lives to Jesus and started walking with him, but we had no idea what walking with him would really mean. Our lives being turned upside down. I got pregnant with our first child, a boy. Not a thought in my head about staying home once he was born. But something interesting happened. Bill and I were in Palm Springs for a conference he had and we went to dinner and we had this German server. When he found out I was pregnant, he took it upon himself to give us some advice. He said, you two be the ones to spend the most time with your child. You don't want the child acting like the nanny, smiling like the nanny. You want your child to smile like you. Bill and I are looking at each other like, huh. 
we talked about it afterward, it really stuck with us. It was so unusual. I had never heard somebody say, you want your child to smile like you. In fact, it was so impactful that Bill and I both remember it vividly to this day. Just this past Thanksgiving, we were talking about it over dinner with the kids. And we jokingly said, that might have been an angel. I don't know, it might have been. So did I go home thinking about leaving my law firm? No, I was still very much career minded. But I did talk to the head litigation partner about having a four month maternity leave instead of three months. And in my mind, that was a huge shift that I would take an extra month off. But when I had the baby and I was on maternity leave, God began moving in my heart. I started thinking about what life would be like when I went back to work. Litigation was not a nine to five job. Depending on what was happening with the case, I might be there from early morning to late in the evening and weekends too. And I didn't want to spend that much time away from my baby. I felt this burden like God was calling me to something else. But with my career mind itself, the most I could think was, maybe he's calling me to a home-based business. I even went to Barnes & Noble and got a book on starting a home-based business and was praying for the Lord to show me what business to start. But one day in church, it was so clear. God let me know he was not calling me to make widgets. That's how I heard it. But he was calling me to write books for him. I didn't know anything about how to get published, but it was so clear. I went back to Barnes & Noble and got a book on how to write a book proposal and I started working on it. Meanwhile, I've got my newborn son and I'm back to work feeling overwhelmed. Things like my son refusing to take a bottle and starving himself until I got home to feed him. So many circumstances started converging. Plus the fact that my baby boy was growing and having all of his firsts and I was longing to be home with him more. In hindsight, it was all God tugging me toward his will, giving me a heart for his will. Psalm 37 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. As I was growing in the Lord and getting to know the Lord and delighting myself in him, he was downloading his desires into my heart. Still, I didn't leave the firm. I was not ready to be a stay at home mom, but I dipped my toes in the water by going part time. 80% time. My daughter was born two years after my son and I made another step and went to 60% time. But it was a joke because if a case heated up, I had to be there. I couldn't tell the client, well, you know, sorry, I already put in my 60% this week. My schedule still looked like it was full time most of the time. But this is what God did. He knows us so well. He knows how to move us. That book proposal I was working on, God opened the door for me to get a top agent who got me a book contract. And my first book was released when my kids were almost three and one. The publisher sent me on this book tour to different cities. It was a whole thing. And I said, okay, the Lord must really be calling me to this, to write for him. That summer, we took a road trip from Wisconsin to North Carolina for our family reunion. So Bill and I had hours to talk while the kids slept in the back seat. I had been praying and waiting for the right time to talk to him. About a year before, we had moved into another new house with a bigger mortgage, definitely factored in my salary. And I was about to tell him I felt the Lord calling me to leave my job. I started the conversation and what struck me was that I wasn't getting the reaction I thought I would get. I wasn't getting the pushback I thought I would get. Bill listened and next thing I knew he was nodding, saying things like, yeah, it would be a blessing for you to be home with Quentin and Cameron. I think he even referred back to that German server and I'm like, for real, Lord? He had input his desires for our family into both of our hearts, and we were in agreement. Our main issue was the house. Bill already did some consulting as a math educator, but he said, okay, I can do more of that. And we said, we may have to downsize the house. All right. But by the end of that trip, we were taking the step of faith. 
I was going to leave behind my six-figure salary. But we had such a peace and an awareness that this was totally God changing our plans and our desires for our family. And I actually felt an excitement about changing paths. My mom had moved to Wisconsin and was a big help with the kids. So I'd be home, but I'd also be able to write more. I was excited about following God's call in that way. I gave my resignation at the firm and two weeks later, Bill got a call out of the blue to be a scholar in residence for the Dallas School District. He had lived in Dallas before and his brother and his family were still there. It was perfect. Plus the weather. I got to leave below zero freezing winters in Wisconsin and go to Dallas. But also, they offered to double Bill's salary as a professor. Come on, Lord! We knew he was blessing us for taking a step of faith. However, my mom stayed in Wisconsin, and for the first time, my husband, who had the flexible university professor schedule where he could work from home sometimes during the week, was suddenly getting up early in the morning and leaving to go to work and not getting home until late in the evening. No husband and no mom to help with the kids. It was all me and two toddlers. God has a sense of humor. He got me excited about leaving the job to be home, but I'm also thinking for real, for real, I'm gonna have more time to write. And he was like, oh yeah, you thought this was your season to write more, but no, this is your season to be what you never dreamed of being, a stay-at-home mom. So, stay-at-home mom life. Let me be real about the struggles. I was frustrated for a while because I really thought I had heard from God that he was calling me to write. But with two toddlers, I had no time to write. And it was frustrating because I was still trying to write. And I was questioning, did I hear God wrong? Is this not what I'm called to do? And it was hard not having my own money that I was earning. Before, whatever I needed or wanted, I pretty much bought. Those days were over. It wasn't easy making that adjustment. Even now, years later, sometimes I think, man, how much money would be in my 401k right now if I hadn't left? During those years, I thought a lot about what Paul said in Philippians 3. Whatever things were gained to me, I count them as loss for the sake of Christ. And I knew that because this was something that the Lord was calling me to, that I had formerly considered a gain, I had to count as loss for the sake of following him. It was hard when I realized my identity had gotten wrapped up in what I did as an attorney. People are always asking, what do you do? And I would see the response I would get when I would say, I'm an attorney. So after I left the firm, when people would say, what do you do? I would say, well, I'm an attorney, but I'm not practicing right now. And the Holy Spirit said, cut that out. <laughs> he would prompt me to say simply, I'm a stay at home mom. And it wasn't easy to do that at first. The Lord was teaching me to die to self to understand that my identity in Christ was enough, more than enough. It was also hard sometimes talking to friends who were in the workforce, still climbing the corporate ladder, having the freedom to do different things during the day. Oh, because the Lord also called me to homeschool, but that's a different video. But the blessings far outweigh the struggles. And even in the struggles, there were blessings because of what the Lord was teaching me through them. Being a stay-at-home mom blessed me because it was a walk of faith. Knowing that I was doing something that wasn't my own plan, that I didn't even necessarily want to do, but it was what God had called me to, made me look to Him and seek Him all the more. This was His plan, so I depended on Him for grace every day to be the mom that I needed to be. People used to tell me, oh, I don't have the patience to be home with my kids all day. And homeschooling? No. And I'd say, oh, you think I do? This was what the Lord used to work the fruit of the Spirit in me. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, 
and self-control. He was squeezing that fruit every day and making it grow. This was how I grew in Christ likeness. When I would think about what else I could be doing and wanted to be some kind of martyr for being at home. And I remember Jesus' sacrifice on my behalf, which entailed infinitely more. Those first couple of years as a stay-at-home mom, I didn't have time to write, but I did have time to go deeper in the Word. The Lord moved me to study during their nap times. So every day I would grab my coffee and Bible and sit at the kitchen table and do inductive study. He was laying a foundation for when he would bring writing back around and I would have a deeper well to draw from. Being home with my kids gave me time to enjoy them. I talked about how hectic my life was as a litigator, so even when I wanted to enjoy my kids during those times, I would feel frazzled and torn. Now I could play with them and read with them. I had time to read the Word of God with them and just talk with them at length. I could experience the breath of their lives which became even more meaningful as they got older. I never wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, but I wouldn't trade those years for anything. Being a stay-at-home mom and homeschooling was my life for about 18 years. But when I think about that time, what strikes me most is my journey with the Lord. It was during those years that I learned to cling to Him. It was during those years that I learned to hear His voice to follow Him, to wait on Him, and to trust Him. It was during those years that I learned to die to self and had to relearn it and relearn it. It was during those years that I learned to pray more deeply. It was during those years that I learned my true purpose. I came up with a plan to become an attorney. I couldn't have imagined God's plan that I would be a fiction author, a Bible teacher, a singer-songwriter create a web series? None of that would have ever entered my mind. The Lord established all of that after I stepped out on faith and left the life I had chosen. If you are a stay-at-home mom and feeling alone, you are not alone. This is your time to lean into your relationship with Jesus. You may not have time to study the Bible at length every day, but you can pray. Just talk to Jesus. Oh, I was talking to the Lord all the time, even while my kids were talking to me. Lord, give me grace. Give me wisdom. What do I say to this, Lord? Lord, I'm tired and this child will not take a nap. Please give me strength. Lord, can I get a shower sometime today? So often my friends did not understand my life, but Jesus did. He became my best friend during those years. But so much of this applies whether you're home full time or not. Being a mom is our primary ministry and the Lord is able to meet us in a powerful way day to day as we walk that out. Mom life is clean life. We give so much as moms. We sacrifice so much as moms. But we can and should see it as a walk of faith, as a walk with Jesus. Don't be afraid to do the thing you didn't plan to do. Don't be afraid to step out in faith. When we hang tightly to our own plans, we miss something greater. Because whatever God has, is greater. We should look to Him to establish His will in and through us. And along the way, we get to grow more in love with our Savior and cling more deeply to Him. If you're a mom, let me know in the comments how mom life inspires you to cling more tightly to Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and comment if you're new to this channel. I would love for you to subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one. Meanwhile, keep clinging.